Hello guys, thank you so much for joining me in another FIFA 23 Tactics video. I'm Ash or Brahma18 and today we have got the much requested Sir Alex Ferguson Manchester United Tactics, in particular the season of 07-08. It's the one which they did of course win not only the Premier League but the Champions League as well. Some will say the best team in at least Premier League history. Obviously, you guys have that debate amongst yourselves, but nevertheless, it was a tremendous team. And today, we are going to go through the tactics. If you're new to the channel, welcome along. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload. What I do here is I'll show you how to replicate real systems in FIFA 23. Not only have we got a balanced game plan, but we've also got a defensive game plan and an attacking game plan as well. Those of you who are long-term subscribers to the channel will remember that I covered this one back in FIFA 20, so what, like three, four years ago now. Um, and anyone who did watch that video will notice lots and lots of changes in this, not only to accommodate the gameplay, which of course has changed since then, but also going back and analyzing some footage. I've noticed things have changed. We didn't even have game plans in that video. We will in this one. So we've got a whole lot for you today. And just before we talk more about this formation, these position changes, I want to quickly say, if you haven't done so already, check out my Patreon. The links are down below, because if you want to see how this tactic ranks and rates compared to all of the other systems that I do cover on the channel, then you can get access to my FIFA 23 custom tactics package, which gives you rankings and ratings and strengths and weaknesses and suitable teams to players for every team, as well as exclusive tactics videos that you can only find on Patreon, the likes of Will Steel's Will Steel Stad Ram, uh, we've got what Vieira's Palace, not so good. Real Sociedad, we've got uh, Celtic, Postacoglu Celtic. We've got a whole range of different clubs that I think you guys will really enjoy. With that being said, let's talk about the formation. So what we want here is this 4-4-2 holding system. And it's very important that you do use the holding one as opposed to the uh, flat one because you want to make sure that you've got these two as defensive midfielders one because then you can alter their defensive instructions such as man mark which we'll talk about later and two because you also want to make sure that they are closer to the defensive line of which they will be if they are at defensive midfield when they are central midfielders you'll notice more of a gap between them and that's really not what obviously manchester united did employ in addition to that you also want to make sure you change this this on the right hand side you'll notice Sancho in this case who is of course playing that Ronaldo role um, he's this time been moved up to right wing other than right midfield you'll just notice he gets forward a little bit further you'll find him in more advanced positions something that you'll notice gradually I guess um, just kind of incrementally it's probably the better word I'm looking for in the gameplay as well let's talk about the tactical instructions then starting off defensively we've got press after possession loss a very counter pressing orientated team and then they would then retreat to that kind of mid block which we'll talk about shortly uh, if they didn't win the ball back fairly quickly the width is on 10 very condensed very compact and this is going to stop teams from being able to play through you super important if you are playing something like a 4-4-2 in which you've only got two in central midfield it's easier for teams to carve you open if you aren't compact and forcing them out wide. And then the depth is on 60, giving you a mid block, but on the higher end of the mid block spectrum as well. Builder play is on slow build up, allowing you to kind of play out from the thirds, through the thirds and from out from the back, which is something they did in abundance, particularly against kind of the lower teams. And chance creation is forward runs. This is very important because what we are looking for, which we'll talk about more in the player instructions, is those interchanging positions of the likes of Tevez, Rooney, uh, Giggs, and obviously Cristiano Ronaldo as well. And this really does give you the best kind of option to do that within FIFA. The whip is on 20. The reason why this is so narrow is because of what we've just mentioned. We want to make sure that the wingers are playing close to the strikers. That's what we're looking for to help that kind of interchanging positions and that roaming. Um, and I found that having a narrow width does this a whole lot better uh, than what it does in a wide system. How are you going to be able to stretch the teams out wide with this kind of narrow width? Well, the best way you're going to do that is obviously through the positioning. You're going to have Ronaldo as a winger. You're going to have obviously the fullbacks and the wide midfielders as well. And we'll also sort out the player instructions as well, where we're going to get players drifting wide. With players in the box, this is on six. Generally going to be the kind of front four of the two strikers and the wingers getting into the box. And then the set pieces, corners and free kicks, both of these are on four. Onto the player instructions then, starting off with De Gea in goal, of course, would have been Van der Sar in that season we've got him on comes for crosses but he's saving outside the box it's only on balance wasn't really a sweeper keeper and it's not something you saw a lot of in the premier league or in england in general during that kind of time period but comes for crosses he was very kind of aggressive in those situations so we do have that on 
The two center backs are absolutely fine. Of course, this is kind of the Vidic Ferdinand role uh, combination in this case. You don't need to change anything there. And then with the two fullbacks. Now, we will kind of tweak this a little bit depending on the game plan, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But for now, we've got both of them on join the attack and overlap. And of course, these guys who are going to help create in that width. And that's what we were speaking about earlier, where you'll stretch teams with the likes of having the run type on overlap. With the two defensive midfielders, of course, you're looking at kind of the Skulls, Carrick, sometimes someone like Darren Fletcher in there, Anderson as well out of the blue. Um, but generally, it was really kind of the Skulls, Carrick, Fletcher combination. And you've got both of them on the same instructions. Both on man mark, which is very important. Yes, it is possible to get outnumbered with only two in central midfield, but generally what they had is one of the strikers, usually Wayne Rooney, kind of tracking back and helping them out as well, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Attacking support for both of them is actually stay back whilst attacking. These played the role of that double pivot and allowed the fullbacks to get forward and overlap and allowed that interchanging of positions from the front four, whilst these kind of man the central area so to speak and help to screen that back four and then with the defensive position both of these guys are on cover center with only two in midfield you are going to suffer from numerical disadvantages at times so it's important that these guys don't get dragged out and make it worse finally positioning freedom something that we didn't have on fifa 20 we have got deep lying playmaker and that's going to allow both of them to roam around into pocket to space and it's going to make it much easier for you to be able to play out from the back Having that double pivot as well is something I've not done a whole lot of in FIFA, having both of them on deep line playmaker. And it really does help with that kind of possessional retention. With the wingers, starting off with Anthony, who is, of course, playing more of that gigs role in this case. We've got him on comeback on defense to make sure he is tracking back. And his chance creation is cut inside, as we've already mentioned, with him getting closer to the strikers and interchanging them. This time, his support runs are unbalanced. He wasn't constantly the type of player who would look to kind of penetrate the back line. He was more someone who did a little bit of everything, kind of that kind of jack of all trades. And sometimes he'd come deeper to kind of show for the ball and link the two defensive midfielders in this case. And then with support on crosses, he's getting to the box for the cross. Now, slightly different on the right-hand side with Sancho, who is, of course, playing the Cristiano Ronaldo role. Just remember, obviously, in this case, I've gone for two wingers on each side who have strong foot, strong side. So, for example, Anthony is left-footed, he's on the left, and Sancho is right-footed, he's on the right. He's on comeback on defence, cut inside and get into the box for the cross. But then his support runs this time are getting behind. He would, of course, utilise that powerful run in order to link up and penetrate that back line. With the two forwards then, these have changed. Just going to rotate these. Rashford, in this case, is playing the Rooney role. Uh, and the reason why is because he does have a slightly higher work rate than someone like Martial, who, of course, only has a low defensive work rate. But preferably, you want high defensive work rate in this case. His support runs are on drift wide. Helps with that positional rotation and also to help create that width that we spoke about earlier with the player instructions. On top of that, attacking runs is gets in behind. And then defence support this time, come back on defence, hoping that he will, of course, help those, or well, that double pivot really, uh, and track back on occasion. But obviously you will need a striker with high defensive work rate. With Martial on the other side, of course, playing that Tevez role, very, very similar, drift wide and get in behind. But this time his defensive support is on stay forward so i mentioned that we also have a couple of different game plans the hallmark of an alex Ferguson team was that they're very adaptable and that's something that's kind of followed them throughout well the entire manchester united reign really didn't have one style to stick to it it was all about adaptability and so i've really tried to kind of hone in on those principles and put them into two different game plans on top of that so starting off with the defensive game plan this time as you'll see a change of formation we've gone for a 4-5-1 so we pulled Ronaldo back, which is in this case Rashford, into right midfield. And often what you'd find is that would be someone like Rooney. Something they did say in the Champions League final, for example. They'll pull Rooney out onto the right-hand side and he would do that. And he had a, such a high work rate that he could do this very effectively. And then they put in another central midfielder in the middle. Whether it be Fletcher, someone like Hargreaves, etc. Anderson. All these guys had a plethora of central midfielders. And they do create a, an out and out 4-5-1. And this is something that they use particularly when defending leads in the big games but also they would start out like this as well it's something they did a little bit later on in the likes of against Barcelona in the Champions League finals as well um, and kind of continued it here so in this case make sure that he's a central midfielder rather than a cam just helps him to bed in and make that a 4-5-1 uh, rather than more of a 4-4-1-1 out of possession 
And then the tactics, as you can see, defensive style and width are the same. This time the depth dropped a little bit, down to 40. Still a mid block, but a little bit lower than the original 60. Slow build up and forward runs remain the same. And this time the width is on 70. Because you don't have that kind of double, uh, well, that striking partnership, you obviously have a little bit of difference with regards to them kind of splitting out wide and that positional rotation. In this case, you tended to find that they actually stretch the play a little bit wider with their original shape and would look to kind of get more crosses into the box instead. It also helps with the likes of getting it into the wide areas and just kind of preserving more time than anything or wasting more time, should I say. Uh, players in the box this time on five, reducing that a little bit. And the corners of free kicks I still kept on four, but you can kind of withdraw these a little bit should you so wish. A couple of changes on the instructions as well. One with the right back. This time we've got him on stay back while attacking and inverted. This would sometimes be someone like Wes Brown or John O'Shea, for example, acting as kind of a third centre back. Whereas on the left with someone like Patrice Evra, you've got him on join the attack, but this time his run type is on mixed. The two defensive midfielders do actually stay the same. And then, of course, this time we have that central midfielder. In this case, his instructions are as follows. He's on balanced attack for attack and support and get into the box for the crosses. His position freedom is stick to position and his defensive position is cover center. We've also, of course, withdrew kind of Ronaldo from this side. This time, this would be Ryan Rooney. So in this case, he's on comeback on defense, cut inside and balance support with his runs. Obviously, he didn't have that kind of pace to penetrate the back line. He did a little bit of everything, looked to drop off as well and support that inverted fullback. And then on the other side, who of course would have been Ronaldo in this case, sometimes switched out onto the left. We've got him on comeback on defense, stay wide and get in behind to make sure he's utilizing um, that pace to run in behind and also get into the box with a cross. The striker's instructions do stay the same other than defense support. This time, whether it's Tevez or whoever it may be, is on comeback on defense. On to the attacking game plan. We do, of course, revert back to this 4-4-2 holding in this case, but there is a little change of tactics. This time, the depth gets pushed up to a high line, which is on 70. Slow build up and forward runs the same, as is the width. Players in the box goes up to 7 this time, pushing maybe one of those central midfielders into the box on certain occasions as well. Just the one instruction change for the player instructions. That is the left central midfielder. In this case, we've got Bruno Fernandes there. Change his attacking support from stay back whilst attacking to balance attack. As we've already mentioned, he will, of course, look to push up a little bit further and support those attacking moves more often than not. And with that being said, we are just about ready to round it off. That's been a pretty big one to dive into, so I hope you guys do appreciate it. And to show your appreciation, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload. If you want to see more about this tactic, how it ranks and rates, suitable teams to play as, strengths and weaknesses, and more, check out my Patreon because you can get access to my FIFA 23 custom tactics package as well as exclusive tactics videos like Poster Coglu Celtic, like Will Steel Stadram, like many, many others um, that I think you guys will really enjoy, as well as a whole host of other perks and rewards as well. With that being said, we're just about ready to round it off. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Really do appreciate it. We're now going to go into some gameplay of the tactic. And until the next one, I will see you soon.